Are you ready to pay up for mass transit in Southeast Michigan? The opposition is now lining up to convince you not to, while Wayne County tries to convince the state it's got its house in order. And what does a simple nail salon opening mean in downtown Detroit? Today is Sunday, October 9th, 2016, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, right, welcome to Flashpoint. We've got Flashpoint debate number two coming up later this evening. The middle round of the Clinton Trump showdowns in a town hall format. We'll see if it gets the enormous viewership of that first debate. But this morning, I got a number of things we need to catch up on here. For starters, this week, the organized opposition appeared against the regional transit tax that promises to finally get the transportation needle moving in the city that put the world on wheels. You know we are notoriously the biggest city that doesn't have real mass transit. But the naysayers say this is too much money for an effort that has never yielded much success before, so why should we trust that it will now? Detroiters are also going to find questions about community benefit agreements, CBAs, on their ballots. Are they good government, or is it fair to ask potential employers to provide anything more than just the jobs that they're bringing in? Also today, Wayne County's problems have taken up a lot of this program over the last several years, and the mess of the new jail still hasn't been fully resolved. Can it be possible that the county's problems are over? This week, County Executive Warren Evans asked that the state release Wayne County from its consent agreement. And a little later on, how can a single nail salon opening create such a statement about downtown Detroit? It's all this morning on Flashpoint. to go at the table this morning. We do have a lot that we want to get to. Uh, we'll call it a Heinz 57 edition. A lot of issues, many of which you're going to see on your ballot as we head toward Election Day. Joining me this morning from the Detroit Free Press, Stephen Henderson is here. Portia Roberson is the Civil Rights Director for the City of Detroit. Former City Council Member Sheila Cockrell is here and syndicated cartoonist and the auto writer for the Detroit News, Henry Payne. Good to have you all here. Uh, I, I want to start with uh, the RTA situation. Stephen, uh, the Detroit Free Press this morning endorsing uh, the RTA TA, but we also big saw surprise there, big surprise yeah, I said, <laughs> no one saw that at all <laughs> but this past week we saw organized opposition amass we're going to try and Sorry. host a debate on that next week um, but I think the point that they're making is look we have thrown money at this before mm -hmm. we still have a system that's largely dysfunctional uh, D dot and smart have never seemed to speak the same language they're arguing that this is just throwing good money after bad. Well, it, it would be, I think, if you were putting that money into DDOT or into SMART. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a third way kind of solution. This is saying that everybody in the region is going to be able to work together, have their say about what we need from a transit perspective, and then fund it uh, in, a, in a reasonable and not very expensive way. Uh, ideally, this would replace DDOT and SMART. It would have replaced DDOT and SMART from the beginning. But of course, you know, I mean, this is a place where uh, the, the, the divisions between <laughs> us uh, play out in ways that prevent us from rational solutions sometimes. I mean, we just cannot get there. So this is the best I think we can do. It will, it will uh, fill the, some of the gigantic holes mm -hmm we have in basic transit uh, infrastructure here in Southeast Michigan. And uh, it is the last chance, I think, for us to really do it. After 40 years, if we don't do this now, I really fear that we never will. A lot of this opposition that we're seeing, Sheila, is suburban based. We already, it was interesting when Mark Hackle and Brooks Patterson both agreed to just kind of sit it out, <laughs> to not take a position against it. But how do you make the sale in the suburban areas that this is finally the right one? Well, I think there's a generational piece to this. I think some, some younger people don't view um, transit as the way that keeps people apart. I mean, as Stephen has said, division is an art form in this region. <laughs> and transportation is one of the major ways. I mean, no other regional system in the country lets anybody opt out. Uh, people in other places are like, wait, what? Cities in your region can opt out of the mass transit system? How does that work? So I think it's because I think it's very much tied to the history of the region's divisions uh, that are fundamentally rooted in race first uh, and then the city versus suburb. And I, so this becomes a place where uh, I think some of the younger generation like are looking at this through a different prism. I do think there are concerns that I've even heard from people in the city about this notion of you know being ready to pay any additional tax mm -hmm. until there's a perception that things are like really better. <clears throat> um, but I think the the team, uh, the RTA team led by uh, the we've uh, Citizen Detroit did a session and um, 
Ms. Tif Tiffany Gunter, the de deputy, she was fantastic. She really it, explained it. Oh, well, hardly, Henry, hardly anybody feels undertaxed in this day and age. And uh, this means about $100 a household. Uh, how do you make that sell uh, right now? And especially well, in, a, in a largely anti-tax environment in some parts of the Detroit right. suburbs. Well, and particularly because we're already taxed for this. You already, <coughs> already taxed uh, $100, I think, uh, uh, in property tax. And you get $0.05 cents in the gas tax, in mm -hmm. the state gas tax, I believe, goes to uh, mass transit. So it's not like uh, you don't already have funding in place. But, uh, but I, 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 I don't think this is, I, I think this has more to do with just fundamentals of this region than it does with any divisions in the region. When you look at where mass transit works in this country, it's in high density uh, places. This is a very low low density. Uh, uh, <laughs> Pretty far city. flung. The mid, yeah, the Midwest is in general. But, defined, but isn't de it? Yeah, Detroit is very low density, and but even in high density uh, places, uh, you go you go to um, Silicon Valley today, uh, a peninsula city, the Bay Area, uh, that has that has tremendous public transit, and they're they're in the middle of a mobility revolution where where mobility is going away from centralized train and bus lines and it's going to more individualized transportation like uh, like uh, Lyft and, and Uber. Yeah. And I, I fear that, um, this, that by putting this tax in place for 20 years, you're cementing a 20th century solution where there are better 21st century solutions coming. You know, Porsche, I took part in, uh, there was a big mobility uh, conference uh, last week at the, out at the airport. You had a lot of these forward sort of thinkers who were, this is what they spend their days doing, is thinking about mobility in the future. And they hardly any of them talk about buses or rail. They are talking about things like Uber and Lyft, even for the masses, for people who we right now would presume can't afford that. I wonder if we're looking at the long picture. Yeah, I think it's a little scary that we're just now starting to talk about uh, rapid transit around rail and around bus rapid transit. I was a big fan of bus rapid transit. Um, you know, I know what they've done in Cleveland along the um, health uh -huh. line, and so I was eager to see it come here. And I know it's going to take a very long time. And and how far will the rest of the country have advanced yeah, by the time yeah. we get to that stage. Um, however, there's no question that this area needs some sort of mass transit. I mean, if you're talking about growing population in any one of these communities, Macomb, Oakland County, Wayne County, you've got to talk about mass transit. There are no young people leaving college or leaving, uh, deciding where they want to put down roots and deciding it based upon the fact that they can't get around. I mean, this is one of the key things they look at. Kids this do not go out. the generation that are getting their driver's Absolutely. licenses now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I lived in D.C. for a short time and used the uh, tr metro there and used Zipcar all the time. You know, no car insurance, you know, wasn't my responsibility, didn't have to move it from side to side on the streets at night, um, just went and got it when I needed it, used it and took it back. It was fantastic. So I think that is where we're moving and hopefully we can kind of do parallel, yeah. you know, rapid transit as well as some of these individualized methods to get people around. Stephen, are you convinced it's forward thinking enough? Given well, I mean, I think uh, what, what prevents the RTA in 10 years from, right. from going back and saying, all right, well, we're not talking about bus rapid transit anymore. We're talking about uh, some sort of individualized uh, transit that we're going to subsidize publicly. Uh, this doesn't lock us in to decisions so much as it as it says we support the concept and we want to fund it yeah. uh, so that, that we can make those decisions. Uh, another thing that you're going to find on your ballot uh, for Detroiters is something that I think is very confusing to a lot of people, Sheila. Let's talk about the sure. CBAs, Community Benefit Agreements, right. and we'll get to them in a moment whether or not they're a good idea in general, but we've got two of them. Uh, they, I guess they both could pass, or they both could fail. Right. But they both can't pass. Correct. They're competing uh, notions. Right. It can try to break down <laughs> A and B for me if you can. Yeah, that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Right, right. uh, well, first of all, what I think is going to be an additional impediment is that the language on the ballot. I've had very, um, you know, in tune people who follow public policy have literally called up and said, "Tell me what the difference what is." What does this mean? I, yeah. I can't figure out what what's what's going on here because the the, the the preambles. Um, kind of have to look for like code, code words. Yeah. So I think there's going to be that issue for people who are, don't have an opportunity to get information in advance. Essentially, the first initiative, uh, Proposal A, is a result of a um, mobilization by a group, groups of people in the city to put this on the ballot as a citizen initiative. And that one, this one, uh, you know, sort of high, very high level. 
essentially says that a group of residents in an area uh, where a development that meets a particular threshold is being con contemplated will be selected from the census tract area and they will then be in a position to negotiate community benefits uh, that are binding on the city and also this particular one uh, gives empowers the residents to sue the city. The, the first one then I guess we'll look at as sort of the community uh, origined uh, one. Right. The second one yeah, came out yes. of the Detroit City Council. Out of, out of yes, right. uh, Council Member Benson's office and that is in part based on Proposal B is an approach to getting, um, having really clear, clear a role for community engagement in the process, but it's advisory, it's not binding. Well, before we get to which one is the right idea, we'll ask, uh, are community benefits at all uh, a good idea? We'll start with Henry Payne, who I imagine has some thoughts on that. <laughs> this is Flashpoint on Local 4. We'll be right back. Back Flashpoint, we're talking about the two CBA proposals, the Community Benefit Agreement proposals that are on the ballot. I, we can't call them complementary. They can't both pass, so I guess we'll call them uh, competing ideas, ex unless you believe that both of them are a bad idea. And anyway, a lot of people would say, look, if somebody is wanting to create a, and develop a business, all they really owe you is the, the, the hard work that's going to go into it, it for, as far as creating employment, the taxes that that business will ultimately pay, and then asking more than that is really uh, akin to some kind of a shakedown. Yeah, and I, that, that, I think that's how most people are going to look at this. Uh, um, you know, the community benefit is the business. I mean, that, that is why the city is approaching these businesses and giving them tax breaks. It, the, that it is oh, well, then get rid of the tax that I said that they would be paying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, and, you know, and, that, and that's, how the, that's how these CBAs get in, is they say, yeah. oh, well, you're giving them right. tax breaks, so now you owe us. Well, no, no, you don't. You, what, what you're owed is, is the business uh, performing and succeeding and creating a tax base and bringing in employees and all, yeah. all of that. I mean, that's the benefit. I, I think CBAs are a shakedown and frankly I, I appreciate Sheila uh, explaining both proposals good, to us but yeah. man it, the, 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 just the fact that you have two I think is even more confusing. In fact Sheila's going to be part of a Citizen Detroit is going to do a forum on yes. these coming up on October 27th if you'd like to do the drill down that'll be at Barth Hall that yes. evening uh, because this, this, it's complicated stuff but Portia weigh in on what we just heard Henry say it's well. a shakedown. No. I don't know that I would qualify it as a shakedown. No. I think that there are definitely the benefit to the community is that a business develops, grows in that community, and you get some benefits from that. I also think that there is this perception um, wrongly that the city and, and others don't already have people yes. from the community giving ideas about what mm -hmm. should go in their community. So there's this sense now um, with Proposal A that un it, unless that passes, no one has ever had any kind of input as to what goes into their community, and that's just not true. They already have have an opportunity to come and talk about what's going on in their area. If some business is going to come into your area, you, you, you definitely sit down and talk to the community, and they've been doing that for years. So it's not, you know, it's not as if this is the only opportunity for communities to have an input well, in a business growing in their neighborhood. In fact, Stephen, this was a big issue when the Illiches announced their huge hockey uh, yeah. arena. Right now, we don't really have the, either of these on the books, and yet they seem to be getting high marks for the fact that they've been using mostly Detroit-based businesses, oh, yeah, no, they've been uh, in the, the hiring uh, practices. So why do we need this if we're watching it work fairly well without it. Well, for starters, we shouldn't be uh, counting on the benevolence of billionaires, in this case, uh, to do those things. Those things should all be part of these development agreements. There should be requirements for those things. And, and God bless the Illiches for the way that they've approached uh, this, this particular development. Uh, but there are other f folks who would not have necessarily done that. And, and I think the, 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 the the impulse to try to sort of codify this somehow is about uh, making sure that this is what happens every time. But I think one point I do want to make, I mean, I was on council for 16 years, we did, there, was, there wasn't this, the kind of development there is now, but we did do three casinos and two stadiums. Mm -hmm. And there were community benefits. They were built into the development agreement. Into right. each deal. Into each right. deal. Rather I mean, but it wasn't codified. It wasn't yes, codified. It was codified. In law. No, no. It was codified the in the development agreement. In that deal, but not in, that, in the law. Yes, but 
you you need to have it in the deal and you have a s in there there's a there's a default clause if you don't meet the terms and conditions you have thirty days to cure or we'll pull will yank the project back why do why do we think the casinos each have a four million dollar annual municipal service fee that was part of the community benefit that was negotiated but that was also what is some of the demands about how those casinos were going to uh... had to approach bidding on this is what kept some of these big players out i remember mirage said no you're not going to tell us that we have to do it this way and this way the, and they were going to provide the biggest employment footprint that, and we chased them off that that is my that, remember yes remember i mean the, 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 the requirement that, that the city imposed that you have a have had to have a um, local part local partner yeah. St Steve Wynn said that's not how I roll I'm not doing that so he did not participate but the people who did participate all had community partners all agreed to terms and conditions uh, of, of benefits direct benefits that went to jobs for but, but we ended up but we ended up giving one of those then to Greek town which had all kinds of trouble and at the time everybody's like wait this could have been Mirage that was maybe better positioned to succeed. Yes, I, I, mean, I, I understand. I, I mean, I, no, no, I read all 11. All that, you right? are not making it up. Yeah. I read all 11 deals. Let me tell you how hard it was to get the three. The only <laughs> reason the three imagine. got done was because they got tie barred, because the politics behind all that. But on the other hand, just as a side note, in that era, those deals were all negotiated and nobody went to jail. Tone is set at the top. So as complicated as it was, well, so but nobody went to jail. But, but, but the but bigger it. context here uh, is, is what Sheila's is talking about. This is the role of government. Government yes. is supposed to be yes. able to negotiate these things on its own. There is a lack of faith in government among right. a lot of folks mm. in the city that they can do that consistently. And that's right. why these things are on a balance. Right. Sure. Well, and, and if, you, if you codify it, then, then, it, then it becomes a, a, a larger problem for a lot of businesses. I mean, just, just as the city tax is right now. I mean, businesses as a whole look at the city as, 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 a, as a problem because, of, because you have in law a tax. I, I think, it, yeah. I think, these, I think these, these CBAs would work much better on a case-by-case -case basis. Otherwise, you, you scare, scare away large I mean, We don't want to drive business numbers. away. Yeah, but on the other hand, the larger context, <clears throat> disinvestment in the city took the tax base out. In order to run services, you gotta, you've got to create ways but, to collect revenue. But That's when Stephen says that paid. some of these billionaires are not back. necessarily as benevolent, I mean, isn't it just good business if you're coming in to say, look, this is how we're going to manage right. our relationship with this community? Absolutely, it's good business. And, and, and my office happens to do a lot of the compliance uh, yes, around yes, these no, executive right. orders and these development agreements. And so I know for a fact that people are coming now to the city and saying, let's sit down with you, talk about what works for us, what's going to work for the community. Right. They're meeting with the community beforehand. Yes. And so um, I don't think it's all about um, uh, just volunteering to do it. I think yes. they know that it, they do not want to build in a place where they're not welcome. So they're actually sitting down with the community beforehand to figure out what works for everybody. Uh, one thing that uh, was built <clears throat> and is now up and running uh, has had a surprising impact in downtown Detroit, a nail salon. Why is that? We'll <laughs> talk about that. We continue on Flashpoint for after this. Point. We'll get to the nail salon in just a second. Before we do that, I want to quickly mention, uh, Stephen, uh, this week Wayne County asked the state to end its consent agreement. Yeah. Uh, that's still without really the jail being completely tidied up, but uh, it's a pretty, pretty big moment. Uh, yeah, well, and the jail is really the only thing sort of hanging out there in, in terms of questions about the county's finances. Uh, they're still precarious because, of course, the tax base in Wayne County is still... Uh, a big question mark. We don't know whether it's going to grow, yep. which yep. would which, which help them out quite a bit. Uh, but they've gotten their costs under control. They've stopped a lot of the practices that, they, that we saw under uh, the previous uh, county executive. I mean, they've really made some hard choices, and I think they probably deserve to get off uh, out of that consent degree. The jail is still out there, and it's got to be reconciled somehow, but, but my understanding is they're pretty close. To, feels like to, you're going to coming to a deal on that um, on just putting the jail there well, at the I don't know site, if that's what they're going to do yeah. I'm not sure which I'm, which way I've, I've heard it both ways yeah, lately and I'm not sure where <laughs> it, is, it really is Henry well I mean this this really is the power of, of leadership it shows how important leadership is in this community I mean we the, at the Detroit News we advocated a consent agreement over <clears> emergency <throat> manager a year ago when this went into place and a lot of that was confidence in Warren Evans right I mean, Warren Evans has has stepped up and and done his job and there was not that kind of there, there hasn't been that kind of leadership in Wayne County or Detroit and in, I think in, Sheila in you think that this means that the, this is evidence that the consent agreement works and the consent agreement uh, approach works if you get 
you get the right leader, the right people tone at place. the top, yeah. and also the right team. He, um, I, I think uh, the uh, county exec has a crackerjack team yeah. of, uh, of assistant um, county execs, and they've worked as a unit, and they came in there with a single vision, how do we fix this? The one thing that's still out there, too, though, is, of course, the, the, the massive disinvestment at yes. the state level in yep. counties. Yep. That's still killing everybody. Uh, right. Warren Evans has negotiated around that, but he'd be the first person to tell you they got to fix that, too. Let me get to my last topic that I really wanted to talk about this morning. When it was announced that the 10 nail salon was opening nail over bar. by... Nail, nail bar. bar. sorry, <laughs> right. Not nail salon, nail bar <laughs> over in the Capitol Park area. Great, but I realized that uh, this building was... Now, we're just a, two blocks from there. Uh, but everybody in this building was going crazy. Then I start seeing headlines in the free press that says <laughs> why this is more than just a nail salon. <laughs> and I guess, Portia, when you start to think about it, uh, there's more hullabaloo over this than an Apple store would ever have, it seems. But that's because uh, for all the great restaurants that have opened, the sports venues, on and on and on, it's still tough to find a dry cleaner. It's still tough to find a place to get your hair cut. On and on, these services, and this seems to be an opening to, into that. I drive to Birmingham to get my hair done <laughs> yeah. weekly. Yeah. I drop my dry cleaning off at the dry, dry cleaning depot on Woodward near 14 Mile Road. Um, I'm still going out that way to go to Target. Um, yeah. And typically until this place opened, I've been going to Royal Oak to get my nails done. So and this is like right across the street from it's you practically. Across the street. <laughs> yes. So this is the kind of thing that that is makes a neighborhood, makes a real city, where you can walk out your door, walk over a few blocks, and get your nails done. I mean, nobody wants to get in their car and have to drive everywhere to do the basic things that most of us do on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. I mean, we just don't want to do that. And so it is pretty huge that you can like walk out, walk down the street and go into a nail bar. I mean, I think it's fabulous. I mean, I no, now no longer have to go to any suburb to get a great manicure and pedicure and what's also important and a really I think an important part of this it's a beautiful salon it is absolutely first-rate uh, mm -hmm. uh, furnishings and the, the whole ambiance and it is two young African-American Millennials <laughs> Detroiters who've come home yeah yeah Move back right. in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to right? right. I'm I'm assume, 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 assume the three of us have not availed no, ourselves. No, yeah. I was going to say, I might go. My nails are pretty janky. I've seen men in there. I've talked to some. It's great pedicures. It's great. I've been in there. But, but, uh, it, I, haven't been in, I haven't been in a nail salon. But, I will, but to, 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 to bring this conversation full circle to the, to the community benefits stuff, I mean, this is why a, a, a growing city like this that's trying to get off its back while you want as few barriers as possible to business to come in here. I mean, the, 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 these nail salons and, and ultimately furniture stores uh, all, all complement middle class. You want middle class income in the city. There's a reason that you, only, that you don't have any movie theaters in this city until you get to 8 Mile. That's because you yeah. don't have this basic Cinema middle Detroit. class income. In the, uh, yeah, in the more, the, the, Detroit, the, yeah. 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 the more you can encourage but, businesses yeah. and middle class to come in here, the more uh, nail salons that will come up around it. Great place to wrap it up. Thanks, gang. And we'll all look forward now to tonight's debate. Now, we are going to be carrying uh, NBC Sunday Night Football this evening. It's the Giants and the Packers. You'll see that on Local 4, but we will live stream the debate for you at clickondetroit.com and no doubt have a lot to talk about next week. Have a great week. Meet the press coming up next right after Mitch Albums, Heart of Detroit. We'll see you next time for Flashpoint.